What's up, Rockstars? Today is probably the most important video I've ever done for you guys. We're talking about how crowdfunded board games are broken and how we can fix it. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members for their financial support. It is through their support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate videos just like this for you guys, and they are for you guys, there's a link down in the description below. Even a dollar a month would help greatly. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'm going to get right into it, but I feel to put a little bit of levity in it beforehand, I'll show you kind of what I've been doing to see so you guys know what I've been up to. Uh, let's see. I've been painting again. So here are some Twisted Fable minis that I quickly painted. Each one of these took like an afternoon. So this was like very quick. So it was not a, a big deal. But I want to get my wife playing it with me. Uh, my my kids love it with me. And uh, um, so I, I figured she'd like painted minis more too. And I uh, went to the store and I bought this and I shouldn't have, but whatever. Uh, it, it is what it is. I've done worse. Uh, okay, so anyway, that's that's enough about me. I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys just so you do kind of what I've been doing beyond fretting over the subject because guys, this is such a big deal. And what we are seeing is kind of, it's something that uh, really puts the like hindsight 2020 into your head. And, and what, what I think by the time I'm done talking about this, you'll see it too. And then we can discuss how can we fix this? How can we do better? So first let's discuss the issue. I'm starting with Marvel Zombies, but I'm not going to yell about Marvel Zombies. So you can you not click away yet. It's it's fine. Um, this isn't about Marvel Zombies at all. But it was a point where I think a lot of people really started to take notice of something. Um, and it's because there's such a big player in it that it, it really stands out, right? So Marvel Zombies comes out and they are doing a huge game with this giant mini and a whole bunch of expansions. I mean, and the Kickstarter exclusive minis galore and uh, you're going to get a ton of boxes. You guys have seen it with like Bloodborne. You guys have seen it with Massive Darkness too. You have seen it with all these other big box games that we always get that it's just this huge thing and you, you don't even realize when you're backing it because you're just seeing pictures and you get it and it's in two boxes boxes and it, you stack it up it's as tall as you are and stuff like that you guys post it on the internet i i see the memes all the time and uh it costs a bunch to ship it costs an extraordinary amount to ship now uh, people will like freak out and even try to address this right and they're like hey this is double what you guys said now i'm not getting into the whole when they s had that estimate and how accurate it was just looking at the price point in general because if you look at the comments that's what they are stuff like it's 60 dollars to ship this 90 dollars to ship this 120 dollars to ship this you know it goes up and up and up and the resounding response from the industry to that in other words not our reaction oh my gosh that's preposterous is that's actually kind of the the actual price you guys have just never paid it before. We've just always, you know, taken the hit any time that the, the price has been like that lately. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of uh, turn to that towards the very end of the discussion of the problem here. But so this kind of got people really focused on, oh, my gosh, this like shipping thing. We know it's been an issue. We've seen that happen. We've seen people, you know, have issues before. But it's obviously really bad. And I think we're getting to the point now where it's been going on for so long that people that were hopeful that it would go away are losing hope. And the reason I say that is because you get these kind of updates. Like this is from uh, Fun Forge Sorrel. They did the Monumental. That was kind of their big thing, too. They did a few others as well, like N Namiji, which they still have to uh, do as well. But this is huge. It's their last Kickstarter project. Okay, they are going away after that. After that, Fun Forge will only release games in retail. Okay, so they are not doing Kickstarter anymore. Now, why is that? I'll talk about that towards the solution part, but suffice it to say, you will not see them on Kickstarter again, period. They are leaving. We are announcing that FunForge won't launch Kickstarter projects again. Okay, so they're going to release these, they're going to ship them out, and then they are done. They're washing their hands from crowdfunding. This is what I mean by crowdfunding board games is broken. It's fundamentally broken. How we've operated them is broken. Let's continue. 
Dawnshade, same thing. Guess what? High board games, no more. They are done. Which is, which is really sad. Unfortunately, we are preparing for a reprint of expansion. It became apparent that analyzing and reanalyzing the numbers that one, due to shipping, we lost money on the first campaign. And two, with the current state of shipping, in other words, it's not going down very fast, if at all, because now the second mile costs more and all this other stuff that I've kind of talked about in previous videos. It would be very difficult to make enough money to, to sustain operations for the next campaign. Therefore, it is with heavy hearts that we are announcing the closure of Highborn Games. Another company no longer a part of this, no longer a part at all. They are gone. And then you even see some of the huge successes. Oh, Sworn was a huge success. Guess what? 200,000 freaking dollars short. I mean, they are like, like losing money left and right. They can't ship this. It's, it's ridiculous. They had to ask, f uh, plead for our money and then offer, you know, as, as kind of like a, I'm so sorry and I think, I mean, you can see how, how just, I've seen him, by the way, at UKG, he looks a lot happier now, so I'm glad you are. Uh, <laughs> that's very good, Jamie. But, um, uh, essentially asking for donations and, and a little bit more from us to even get this game out. Why that is, we'll discuss that. And then Sheol, same thing. They funded, they had this uh, big, cool uh, box of minis and a giant city and all this awesome, fun stuff, and they need help shipping it, and they need to ask for it. And then we see stuff like this. So this is Mythic Games talking about how they are doing a retail-only game. That's like a small game, how they're delaying several of their big box campaigns, so they're not doing a whole lot of big box stuff right now. They're doing stuff like Super Fantasy Brawl stuff, this retail thing, stuff like that. Uh, uh, well, a single expansion for Solomon Kane, right? Just little, little stuff like that, reprints, whatnot. Okay, so what's going on? Why, why is this an issue? This is an issue because, and it's not just companies, but you guys, I am, we, the companies are, we're all guilty of this. But we, we were already heading towards this problem and it was just bound to have one thing snap, in this case, shipping and the logistics of just raw materials and manufacturing and, you know, pretty much everything involved with the making of the physical game and then giving it to you. And, and it, bro it broke the entire industry. And even even the bigs like come on are like no we're not footing this bill anymore we're not doing that. We wanted bigger we wanted batter we wanted bigger uh, just everything the entire thing and so that's where we got I mean if you could just compare some of the older Kickstarters you may have gone to some of the newer ones you'll see how everything has just gotten bigger the scale of the minis have gotten bigger the amount that we get are bigger there's always some big thing I mean like this sort of thing would not exist on Kickstarter five years ago. It just wasn't a thing, right? We, you, you started getting to the point where I think the pursuit was this right here, nine million some odd raised. The pursuit was the biggest revenue number, that how much you could put into that. It, it got to the point where even raising a million is not considered a huge success where you're doing so well and you're getting all these funds in that you're you're able to hire all the staff and do all these things and that's how a lot of companies grow right in times that are good you you, you kind of you you fill out as a company right and you do all these bigger and better things but then guess what nobody cares about your 5 million campaign after you make 9 million it looks like you didn't make that much like why would you oh man what a bummer what a dud only 5 million you made 9 million the last one how are you going to top that you do it bigger you do it bigger more expansions more ridiculousness more exclusives more of this more of that more of everything it's not enough just to have a campaign anymore you have to have 600,000 words written in a volume this big for a campaign to be of any uh relevance now it used to be oh my gosh we have a 60 hour campaign oh yeah well we have a 100 hour campaign oh yeah we have three acts each one a 100 hour campaign and it goes up and up and up and all of that pursuit is eating away at profits it's narrowing the margins right? That 9 million is a revenue, not a profit number. And the reason it's not a profit number is because they got that by offering this gigantic miniature. They got it by offering all these different things, by promising the world all these different scenarios and all these different, you know, this and that. And that's where it came from. That's how we got there. And 
So we kind of like killed profit for revenue, which doesn't make a lot of sense unless the industry is healthy, unless you're doing well, unless you're making so much of that little margin that everything's fine. We're in a static thing. But then COVID hit. Then all these other logistical issues uh, hit. Everybody's stuck at home and has money that they would normally spend eating at restaurants that now are buying board games. 2020 was the biggest year for board games. It was huge. Not just crowdfunding, just in general. It was massive. Whereas a lot of industries like restaurants and stuff were very much hurting. That's because people were diverting that money elsewhere. And a lot of that went to board games huge year. So everybody was worried COVID would hit. And then suddenly, no, COVID's great. COVID's helping the industry. Uh, not so much anymore. So that is the issue. And it's partly our fault for wanting to back something that's so big and talking bad about uh, something that only made $2 million or something measly like that, or, you know, whatever it might be and wanting more and wanting bigger and wanting better. And it's all the videos that I make and that Quackalope makes and that Board Game Co. makes and members of people and everybody else in this space that's covering this. We cover that excitement. We cover those things because we're right there with you excited. Like I'm part of the problem. You're part of the problem. They're part of the problem. I'm not trying to point fingers here. I'm just saying this is, I think, what led us to this point. Now, how do we fix that? Well, that's how I kind of go back, roll it back to avoiding this stuff. This is not profitable. It's not profitable from a financial standpoint. It's not profitable from a public relations standpoint. It's just not a viable thing. It's why it won't go to retail because it won't sell like hotcakes because it's expensive to make. It's expensive to ship. And then you got to charge out the wazoo for it. And then everybody's just upset now. And so nobody wins. It's a lose-lose situation for everybody, which is why which is why you see Monumental going retail, which is why you see Mythic Games launching a retail-only small box game or a single expansion plus some reprints or another uh, round or season of Super Fantasy Brawl where you're just adding like minis and stuff like that because it's smaller, it's more sustainable, it's smarter. So really what we need are we need to make smaller games Right when when you get something like Zombicide, I'm putting a massive darts, but it's it's pretty much a mod of Zombicide, even with the two. Okay, so even if you get something like Zombicide, it's we need to get past the point where like it used to be a dollar a mini was good, and now suddenly it's like a seventy cents a mini is good. And it's like oh, you're only giving me hundred and twenty minis. Well, Anastir has like hundred and thirty two minis, and oh yeah, well this person has you know two hundred and twelve minis. I've seen a lot of Euro like four X space games, you know, advertise that kind of stuff, right? Like it's just a ridiculous amount of stuff, and all of that costs money. And oh, I want this dynamic sculpt and this multi part thing. You know, Wake and Rum started doing a whole lot of multi part art minis and they looked so much cooler and the sculpt designs are so much cooler and I love it and I love those but they cost way more to make like three four times as much to make as a single cast mini but we want these fancy ones and we want them bigger 30 28 millimeter get out of here 32 get out of here 35 no we're uh, inching towards 40 millimeter minis as a minimum and the painter in me loves that the painter in me doesn't want to paint these tiny little minis that are still fun to paint but they're tiny I want the big ones that look really cool on the table and do all that but I also want a whole bunch of them and so the, the blow just increases we need to make smaller games it doesn't mean we need to do tiny epic it doesn't mean we have to even do the retail stuff like this but it means that it has to be something that could be viable at retail something that's not overproduced at the wazoo uh mythic games was talking about uh six siege six siege would be a perfect game for retail except it is premiumed the freak out with 3D terrain and all this other kind of stuff, right? Descent that we saw, the last descent that we had with 3D terrain, I don't expect to see a lot of that in the future. And if it is, it's going to be retail, not Kickstarter, which is such a turn of events. It's it's just wild. But yeah, definitely it, it, it needs to be smaller take less of a footprint, and it doesn't hit as hard. All these companies like Mythic Games and Oathsworn, Shadowborn Games, and all these other games, companies that make these big box games got hit so much harder than the card, you know, battler, you know, makers or, you know, what, whatever, you know, little tiny Euro thing and stuff like that. They didn't get hit as hard. Now they still got the logistics. They still got the manufacturing, the um, actual material costs, all that stuff still affects them, but not to as big of a degree as shipping a gigantic miniature. 
furniture or shipping a game that comes in two boxes, both of them this big or whatever uh, you have in mind there. So making smaller games is important and making smarter decisions, right? Stuff like that. You want to increase the, the 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 quality instead of doing 3D terrain, do you know little little plastic tokens, right? And in other words, instead of making the bulk bigger, instead of doing all of that, instead of dealing with the cardboard and cardstock that's like doubled in price or more, all of that, you know, maybe just do the plastic tokens. You just get you know one thing, one sheet. You can make all your tokens. You're good to go there. Maybe you can even reuse shapes from another one. A lot of times you can save there. There's a lot of smart things you can do when making a board game. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but like the manufacturers, once they make that, they, they have it and you can reuse it. And, you know, like another company can be like, oh, that's a cool diamond shape. I'll use that. Just print this inside that diamond shape. You don't even need to pay for anything else. It's already there. They already have it. So you can get savings if you reuse stuff they have, dice, stuff like that. All that's reusable. All that is smart thing. So we need to build them smaller. We need to build them smarter. And really, it it's, it's, it's a bloat, right? In, in, in times of excess, we get excessive. And so it wasn't just what they were offering, it's how they structured their company. And you know, now suddenly when the money's coming in and you're doing pretty well and you're feeling pretty happy and you're making 9 million bucks and you're selling you know, to 40,000 people and you're shipping things relatively easily, it might be nice to have that uh, full-time employee that does nothing but answer the phone. It might be nice to have the three people dedicated to running your community. It might be nice to have somebody that just writes the updates and takes you know professional f photography of all of your products and all these niceties, right? That aren't necessary to like delivering a product or even making a product or designing a product or any of that kind of like throughput right there, right? And it's just the nice to haves. But now suddenly, well, you gotta tighten your belt a little bit. You gotta be smarter about that. We've seen this happen to companies individually before. I look at Conan, or uh, not Conan, Monolith from uh, when they did the Beyond the Monolith and it failed and they had to slim down and they slimmed down crazy. Like they were like, okay, everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> core group let's go <laughs> right and that's but this has been doing it since then with one kickstarter at a time and doing that and taking it small they were almost ahead of the curve in that sense because i see a lot of other companies either outright leaving the space and never coming back or tightening that belt kind of doing something kind of similar trying to be smart with their decisions so launching too early is one of the last things i want to mention here uh, we look at a lot of campaigns and it may seem like they're all equal but they're not uh, you can think of one right now, whether it's Trudvong, whether it's Hell, whether it's any other, any any amount of games, a came, came with Monster, right, where you can tell that they announced it and asked for money for it way before it was really even ready, right? Well before the development. And then you see some that are like, yeah, we're develop we'll deliver by Christmas. We're pretty much done, right? I see that in prototypes all the time. I'll get some games that are barely playable. Some games that may have one mission and some games that pretty much a final product you're like i mean it's a prototype of this because it was custom made but it's the rule book's all done it's all laid out it's all in color you have all 10 missions here you're doing all this right and so th they're not all equal and there are a lot of times where it was easy just to you know we know what we have the visuals we have the images we kind of know what we're doing here we think we know where this is going to go let's throw it on kickstarter we'll take the money and then we'll develop it and then deliver it eventually and what you see is the cost continue to rise the money dry up and the issues start arising from that so i think launching uh more well done games are going to be the norm i think that's a smart thing to do right now and it, it kind of sucks because you do lose that co-development you have with backers a lot and it means that you have to invest a lot before even coming to kickstarter which is the whole point is so that you can fund before you invest a lot so there's kind of like like i i, I get that it's contradictory but it's just the way things are right now launching too early is just not smart for a multitude of reasons but with this industry with how the prices are for every aspect of this whether it's the employees whether it's the uh, materials, whatever you, you want to point at, it's more expensive right now. And it's just, it doesn't make sense to do things early. So you're going to see uh, more well-developed, more ready games coming to the uh, Kickstarter, or at least you should. And then lastly, those margins. Um, small margins are a choice. If you are a developer and you're talking about, oh, well, our slim margins, that's the margin you decided on. 
And so it, it, it's kind of hard to blame the small margins when those were, were done because you were expecting to sell a whole bunch and that's fine, but that's a gamble. And if you don't sell as much as you thought, well, then those margins are now hurting you. I've talked about this a few times before, so I'm just gonna gloss over it. But um, anytime you make a product like a board a game, especially one with plastic injection models, so miniatures of any kind, there's an upfront cost that's this huge amount. And then your profit doesn't turn positive until you meet that threshold. So if you're out $100,000, let's say, to keep things easy, and you're making 30 bucks per copy, you have to make 30 bucks per copy until you hit that 100,000, and then you kind of get past that, right? Now, the math is a little bit more involved than that, and I get that that's a simplification of it, but that's the idea. You have a threshold that you have to do. There's minimum orders, there's all sorts of stuff in there. I'm not gonna get into it. The point is, is that your margin largely affects the risk factor. And when we as backers, and this is why, again, it's part of us too, we, when we as backers want a great product, well-made, high quality, a wonderful experience, prompt replies and assistance to any questions we might have, all of that costs money. It costs money to support, it costs money to make. And we need to be willing to pay for that. Com Bring that back to the companies need to make smarter products. Like I said, smaller, more well done products that are more sustainable, that are, are using smart components and working uh, intelligently with the manufacturers and the distributors to do all this stuff. There's a lot of things you can do and you can pay for to make these games and get them to everybody's door. And you can be kind of smart with that to save some money that way too. And that money saved could then go towards other things like better support and stuff like that. So we can still pay around the same amount and get essentially better stuff, better games without all the bloat, without all the stretch goals that are going to break the balance anyway, or aren't utilized enough or whatever it might be, or without all the, the FOMO stuff, because there's not as much stuff to FOMO about with the ability to get more things at retail because more things are sustainably made to where they're not just some ridiculous, um, uh, uh, I'm, I can't think of the term right now, but just an over over amount of money in excess put into something like a, a giant mini that is just a tile destruction tool, for instance, uh, to go back to Marvel Zombies. So anyway, that's, I think, the problem. And that's, I think, the solution. More retail, smarter, smaller. And then for us, realizing how much our money goes and the fact that we need these companies to be sustainable because what we don't want is monumental. What we don't want is Dawnshade where these companies or even Shadowborn Games with Osworn and stuff like that. Osworn did fantastic. They did a great, they were newcomers, they success story galore. Except then, oh crap, now they might go under as a business if they, we don't help them. Now we did, we gladly did. They showed us a lot of respect. We showed a lot of respect back, but Anybody can be hit by this and it's it's nasty and companies are dying. They are literally leaving and will not come back. We will never see these companies again. And every game they were making, every game they were thinking of could go down with them. Now there are opportunities to to sell off that idea or, or partner with other things, but like it, it's just, it, it's bad out there guys. And we need to change things as backers and as creators. So I'm begging you, I'm pleading you guys, to at least give what I said some thought. If you have any ideas at all, if you'd like to give any sort of wisdom out either to backers or to creators, please feel free to use my comments down below. Let me know, let us know, I will read them. I can incorporate those into future videos and get the word out. We need to do better. We need to rally back and come back smarter than ever before and better than ever before. We need another 2020 where companies are making record profits, not just revenue. And I think we can do that as long as we work together. That's it, that's all I had today, guys. Uh, hopefully we have a happier update soon. I do have a news update ready for you guys that I'll be covering very soon. There's been a lot going on, but it was outside the scope of this video. So if you are interested in that, there is that subscribe button, of course, otherwise YouTube probably won't show you my channel again and you'll never know. And with that, have a great rest of your day. Take care, guys. Bye.